Alrighty, I'm going to show you how to make skeleton leaves. And for those of you that are interested in making the Bodhi leaf icons, um, I'm going to be using sycamore leaves, not only because they are natural to my area, but also because the sycamore leaf has significance to Ethelmark and the ANS groups here. You're going to want to make sure that you get some good specimens. You don't want little bug bites or tears or anything like that because these are going to get so fragile that if they're already torn, they're not going to stand up very well to the process. So what I've got going on here is I've got a pot full of baking soda that I am cooking down uh, to release the carbon dioxide out of it and this will allow it to turn into washing soda. So I'm taking sodium bicarbonate and turning it into sodium carbonate and we're going to use that later to prepare some of our leaves. Now you can get your skeletonized leaves simply by putting them in water and waiting a few days but I'm a little impatient so this is the process that I'm using to kind of speed things up. So what we're going to do is I've got five cups of water. I've got this pan already heated up to help save some time. Put five cups of water in here. Now, as well as the sodium carbonate, you could also use borax, which I've got here. And you only need a tablespoon of it. I'm just going to eyeball it because this is an exact, oops, a little bit more than a tablespoon, but it's not an exact science. It just, it's there to help it get softened up. So you want to stir this right away. And like I said, it helps if the pot is already warmed up a little bit because this helps that dissolve. So borax isn't actually too chemically different from sodium carbonate. It's just, um, I think the pH is a little different. It's probably actually milder. It might help the leaves from breaking down too quickly. And this is a very delicate process. I mean, leaves are already very fragile in the first place, but if you leave these in here too long, they're going to turn into mush. And we don't want that. So now that you can see, this is mostly dissolved. What you're seeing, these lines are on the bottom, it's just kind of the liquid, um, with little air bubbles from it being heated up already. But this is nice and stirred in there. We're going to get our leaves. I've already cut the stems on these. That way they'll more easily fit into the pan. And just drop these in there. We don't really want to crowd them. I'm going to dip this in here a little bit. Just to help it get some coverage. Alrighty. And I'll turn that just up a bit. Once this actually starts boiling, you'll want to turn it down. You don't want it hot, hot. You just want that um, sodium carbon, or in this case, I'm using the borax to work into the leaf. And we're only going to leave it boiling for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and set a timer. Pardon me while I lean over here. 30 minutes. And once that's there for 30 minutes, we will come back and I'll show you part two. Alrighty, and we're back. So I have pulled this off the stove about five minutes before 30 minutes, actually, because it looked like it was getting pretty soft. And if you notice, this is very crucial. The leaf still has its shape. I mean, I can move it around and it stays in one shape. If your leaf um, has kind of turned into what looks like wet spinach, you know, like it's just kind of all amorphous, you've gone too far. It's It's been overcooked and this isn't going to work anymore. So you want to make sure that it's been on there long enough to get tender, but not so long that it's lost its shape. Now, I've taken this off the stove, and this, I didn't time it, but I wanted to let this get down to room temperature. If you, if you can see here, I'm grabbing the pot, it's not burning my hands. It's very important before we move on to this next step to let it cool down to room temperature first, um, so that way we don't damage it. So what we're gonna do now, very carefully, don't, don't have the pressure too high, like don't do this. <laughs> Like I said, we're trying to be gentle with this leaf. So very gentle stream. I've got a plate under here to catch it. We're going to very carefully with our hands lift this up. And see, this is a good indicator of strength. I can actually do this. If this were too cooked, I wouldn't be able to do this. So we're going to set this down here on this plate. And that is going to gently 
rinse that off. It'll be pretty easy to tell when it's rinsed off because the the borax or the washing soda um, that you've used will leave kind of a, a slippery residue on the leaf. So when it feels like that residue is mostly gone, and again, be extra careful. The leaf is in its most fragile state right now. It is so easy to rip. Not as dangerous as when it was warm, but still be extra, extra careful. Okay, so now what we're going to do, this is going to be a little tricky with a phone in my hand, but I'm going to try to press this down with me. We're going to pick this plate up. We want to try to center the leaf as best we can. Hold it very carefully. I know this is going to be tricky. Kind of hold it carefully with your thumb, and we're going to drain that water out to the side. Let it finish dripping if you can. And we're going to let this air dry. It might take a while, especially considering that this is cold water, so it's going to take a little longer to dry. But once this is um, pretty much dry, then we'll come back home for part three. Alrighty. Now that our leaf has mostly dried, um, I took just a little bit of the cooled um, water that had the borax in it um, because I found that it helps um, add uh, just a little bit of protection whenever you're trying to, to brush over this because you don't, again, the goal is to not make it rip. Um, and sometimes if it's a little too dry, uh, the stuff may have a problem coming off. Now you can see here, it looks like I ripped it, but I haven't. There's actually very fine tissues of the veins left in here. And this is the most painstaking part of this process. Um, and I imagine this will probably turn a lot of people off from wanting to do this. Uh, and um, unfortunately, there's no good news that I can say about this part. Even if you were to go the traditional route of letting this sit in water, this is still the most important step. Um, now, if you pick a, um, a sturdier leaf to do this project with, then maybe you could use a soft bristle toothbrush and that might be, give you faster results but because I'm using such a soft leaf if I go too quickly on this or if I go you know, with a brush that's too rough it's going to completely destroy this so that's basically it gets you a very soft brush I've got a little little flat brush here that's meant for um, like watercolor painting and I'm just going to slowly see if I can find a spot for you guys here we go so that you can actually see what I'm talking about just very gently and I do mean gently. I'm almost putting no pressure on this. Almost like I'm trying to apply watercolor onto a canvas. Maybe even more gentle than that. Because like I said, I can feel the tension of this brush pulling and tugging on the leaf. Let's start down here in this corner so you can see it again. And that's it for this part. This is going to take me quite a while, so I'm going to stop here, and I'll be back once I've got more of this cleaned off.